All right, we are back with our 39th episode in the Torch News Roundup. It's been a while. I've been busy working on the upcoming issue of my comic, Bullets Bourbon, Private Eye. After a couple of weeks off, we have plenty to talk about, so as usual, let's get right to it. Well, the cast from Marvel's Inhumans TV series has been released. Iwan Rowan will be playing Maximus the Mad, and I'm sure I probably butchered that name, but there you go. Maximus is, generally speaking, the Loki-esque villain of the piece. Anson Mount will be playing the leader of the Inhumans, the noble Black Bolt. Sorinda Swan will be playing Medusa. Folks might remember her brief work in the genre as Zatanna on Smallville. Ken Leung as Karnak, not to be confused with Johnny Carson's Karnak. Ame Ickwalker as Gorgon. Isabel Cornish will play Medusa's little sister, Crystal. Mike Moe as Triton. Sonia Balamores as Orion. And Ellen Waglum as an undisclosed character that will presumably be viewers' entry point to the show. And of course, Lockjaw, the Mighty Mutt, has been confirmed to appear as well. So it sounds like things are shaping up really well here. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the cast and costume, hopefully before long. It should be a dilly. The Inhuman series will debut in IMAX theaters before premiering on ABC on Tuesday, September 26, 2017. Speaking of TV, we've learned Chris Williams will be stepping into the role of Jefferson Pierce, a.k.a. Black Lightning, in CW's upcoming show of the same name. It's not known as of now how Black Lightning will fit into the CW superhero landscape. Is it part of the Arrowverse, or is it its own thing? But I think it's reasonable to assume he'll be involved in the huge annual crossover. Fox's as-of-yet untitled X-Men series has begun casting, Jamie Chung, last seen as Valerie Vale over in Gotham, has been cast as Blink. Emma Dumont will play Magneto's daughter Polaris. The series will star Amy Acker and Stephen Moyer, who will play two ordinary parents who discover their children possess mutant powers. Forced to go on the run from a hostile government, the family joins up with an underground network of mutants and must fight to survive. It's shaping up to be more interesting than originally presented, but only time will tell. Be sure to let me know what you think of Fox's next upcoming X series in the comments below. Speaking of all things X, Simon Kinberg has written the screenplay for the next X-Men film currently in the works, tentatively titled Supernova. He's also being rumored to direct the film, yet nothing is cast in stone as of now. Producer Laura Schuler Donner has said that the film won't center around the Charles Eric dynamic this time around, which will probably be the first time in the franchise's 17-year history. Is that a good thing? Probably, since that storyline felt milked dry in Apocalypse. Though, it would be a shame to lose Michael Fassbender's participation in the film. And in our ongoing The Batman Movie drama, it's been made official, director Matt Reeves is back on The Batman. As we wait to see how that story develops, word has it that the Lego Batman movie director Chris McKay is apparently in talks to helm a Nightwing feature film. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Dick Grayson is my favorite Robin so I'm more than fond of the character, but I don't know if I can see him in a solo movie right away. If he were involved in a Batman movie first, or even a Teen Titans movie first, it would go a long way in setting the stage for him to have a major role in the unfolding DCEU. But WB seems to be randomly throwing characters up against the wall and hoping something sticks at this point. We'll see. And Entertainment Weekly have released our first real look at the characters from Thor Ragnarok. I'm a bit disappointed in Thor's makeover. He looks nothing like the Thor we all know and love. He needs the long hair, the flowing blonde Asgardian locks that we all know and love. Loki looks much the same. Ironically, I think he looks better with shorter hair, a la the first film, but I figure the fangirls demanded Tom retain his flowing ebony locks and their voices won out. I really love how Kate Blanchett looks as Hela, quite fierce and no-nonsense. I'm guessing she's a lady not to be trifled with. We get a glimpse of Tessa Thompson's in-name-only Valkyrie, and Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster. He looks quite a bit like the Collector's second cousin. The film will co-star the Hulk, and it's been confirmed that the planet in question all are involved in will be Planet Hulk's Sakaar. And of course, Doctor Strange will be making his sophomore appearance in the MCU by appearing in this film as well. I still have really high hopes for this film, as I love the two previous Thor films, and I've never really been a die-hard Thor fan, comics-wise. 
Let me know what you think of the photos in the comments below. Thor Ragnarok is set to roll all over you November 3rd. Alright now, as our all too brief time together comes to a close, let me remind you to give me a holler in the comments, or on Twitter in the description below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you're so inclined. And only if you're so inclined. You can check my comic in the link in the description below. With all that said, this is Johnny Torch reminding you, keep the flame burning brightly, and I'll be with you again real soon. Out. Out, brief candle.